Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of Solar Sales Uncensored. I am your host, Aaron Browning, and I am fired up for today's episode. I have my good friends, I have my business partners, Mr. Rob and Raisa Santiago. This has been in the works, by the way, because these two, this is a power couple, and you're going to hear me say that phrase a lot. They are moving, they are shaking, they are disrupting the solar industry. I don't care what company you're with, I'm sure you have seen them. You have seen them present on stage to thousands. You have seen their social media game. But today's episode is called How This Power Couple Built a Massive Sales Empire from Scratch. And I want to be clear on that, my friends, from scratch, zero solar experience a year ago. They have a sales force, a sales organization of over 400 strong. Without me stealing their thunder, Rob, Raisa, how the heck are you, my friends? Man, good Hi. morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. morning. Everything going well in your world? I like that intro. I was ready to like turn my camera off and just start air punching. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'll make sure I'll send it to you. But everything I said is true, guys. It's deserved. You guys are shaking this industry up. If you guys don't mind, take 60 seconds or so each and give your background. Maybe one of you do it completely up to you. Just a little bit more about your family, what you guys did and how you got introduced to solar. My queen, go ahead, take it away. All Let's... right. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Reza Santiago. We first got introduced into the solar industry, I believe it was like May 2021. But we really didn't take it serious because we were building another business. We were top leaders, top income earners in, a, in that company. And so we had over 5,000 people on that team. So we were really busy. And although we really loved the concept of the solar industry, it was just something that we couldn't do at the time. But it wasn't until June 2022 where we really caught the vision. We saw a neighbor of ours go solar. Rob got on my case about it. <laughs> He's aren't you in that solar company? And it really shifted our mindset. And I really will say that's really the time that we said, let's do this. Let's take it all the way. We did a 90 day run and we're still riding that way from that 90 day run. You know, that's a reoccurring theme, by the way. I hear leaders say that all the time. And by the way, a little pet peeve of mine, and this is not for you two, and you guys never heard me say this. I think 90 day run can be overused. Because most leaders don't actually do it. You guys actually did, right? I see so many people throwing it around where they buckle down. In fact, by the way, I don't want to say it. What is a 90-day run to you guys? What does that well, mean? Some people claim a 90-day run. It's more yeah. like two weeks. But They'll put in two weeks of the effort. But a true 90-day run, and what my mentors have taught me is you can do a couple real 90-day runs in your career. But if you really do it right properly and dedicate those 90 days, put it in 16-hour days, like... Me and my wife in our previous company, when we talk about 90 days, what we did here in this platform, we were able to bring in 150 people in those 90 days. I'm talking about event after event, webinar to in person, phone call, meeting, late night, early morning, full dedication, conversation with the family prior, letting them know, prepping them for what's happening, yeah. keeping all the distractions out and really staying on track for those 90 days, putting the work in. Yeah, see, that's my definition. It's you're giving everything else up to focus on whatever that, that blitz is, that 90-day run for that company. Like, you're locked and loaded. If I were to ask your kids what's happening right now, like, they know. <laughs> I, I love that you said that. It's 100%. you got to get buy-in yeah. versus exactly. some people. And I'm sure you guys would agree that it's just overused. Oh, I'm on a 90-day yeah. run. I recruited one person this month. What? Come on, man. That get out of here. That's not is... a 90-day run. Oh. Result, not by the results, right? You should, you should for sure. Maybe not the first month, especially if they're new. We got to pivot and coach and train. By yeah. month two, month three, 100%. I'll take anybody. If they're willing to give 16 hours a day to whatever their mission is, oh my gosh, you're going to have success. I totally right. agree. You mentioned a previous company. I, obviously, I know this story well, so I do want to touch on this. You guys crushed that other company, and we're going to do our best. You guys are our fan base here. We try not to use company names with the best intention. Sometimes it slips up. That company ran through some hardships. And so that was your lifeline. That was your income. So you guys were forced to pivot a little bit if we're being transparent. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. That's correct. You, you kind of want to touch on that? Sure. They ran into some hardships where basically the company was shut down. Um, and we were making about 30, 40, sometimes $50,000 a month. So yeah, when our back was against the wall. Say that louder like, for the people in the back. You were making how much a month? <laughs> Anywhere between 30 to 50,000 a month. Um, Love it. And we went from that to zero. So then it was like, okay, where, where, what industry can we make this kind of income again and fast? <laughs> and 
that's where the solar industry came into play with us. And we were like, hey, we already know the sales aspect of it. We just obviously have to learn the solar game, like you said, from scratch. But that's really what put our back against the wall. And we had to do that 90 day run. We, ha we just had to. Yeah, I love that you guys said it. And I was intentional with that question because I want to make sure that there are people of out course. listening. A big part of our audience, by the way, are people who have one toe into the solar space. Like they're thinking about it. They maybe have a sales background, maybe even brand new to sales, just so you guys know. And so I think it's important. I personally think sometimes when you're forced, it gets the best reaction out of us versus if you guys, and let's be honest, if that income didn't slow down, I know it's back now, but if it didn't slow down, I don't know if you'd be here today. I really exactly. don't. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Huge. God's plan. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said God's plan. <laughs> It yeah, was, by the way, we'll say that a lot too. You didn't, you weren't saying that right then. <laughs> yeah, so that happened. It was like, why? What's going on? It was like, what the hell? What we go from making thirty thousand in a month to zero and still have all the expenses. Our bills didn't stop coming in. We were right. car allowance recipients in our company as well, six figure earners in our company, and not only the income and what personally happened to us, what our teams. We were leading a team of five thousand people. So if it shut down for us and it did an impact on us, now we're looking for a solution for other families. You know, us not being able to sleep at night knowing that yeah. a single mom didn't have a check come in this week when she expected it. And she left her job because of what we showed her. We walked her into entrepreneurship and now that's just an example of what happened. So we had to think on our feet and God put that platform in our hands prior to that happening. So we were involved yeah. in the company we just have one to win, like you said. But when we put both of our feet in, oh, it's game on. And now a year later, looking back, first of all, I can't believe the 12 months passed that long, fast, snap. And now we're multiple six-figure earners on this platform. I'm excited about where it's going. It's just no experience whatsoever. And now the team is just building up. It's getting crazy. I love and that. I want to touch yeah. on that if I can real quick, Aaron, because I think it's important for people to know this too. So not only are we at zero, so I want to like just the mind space of where this happened. We are having all of these emotions in the background, right? We feel like we were mourning a loss. We <laughs> lost our team. Teams were jumping to other companies. People close yeah. to us that we mentored and coached for three or four years, all of a sudden act like they don't know us anymore. People that we created that we helped build to six figure earners that don't even talk to us right now. And I think that you have to be so strong in that moment because we knew what we had to do and run this 90 day run. And it was more than income. It was the emotions that were going on, the things that were happening, the things that we were seeing. You got to be strong to be like, let me build another team. Because to be honest with you, we didn't want to build another team. We're going we're to touch on that because you're 100% <laughs> right. Any leaders or even aspiring leaders, if you think, and I don't care if you guys had to partner with us, and that's not even what this is about. If you think you only have to build something once and you're done, that, that is unicorns. Like that is the stuff dreams are made of. <laughs> Leaders in this space, if you're big about team building, you're building multiple times, multiple mm -hmm. times. Most people listening would have quit. Oh, you built this up, you bled for it for years, you have this lifestyle, you have the bills, and now it's taken from you and it wasn't their fault. Like you want to talk about most people going into victim mode, right? Yeah. They didn't. They said, we gotta pivot. The other thing too, and I, I know none of this is scripted and most people don't know that, but it's the truth. Another thing I love about you guys, and you guys just, indirectly touched on this and I want to bring it up because I don't know other leaders talking about it. Every company I've ever been affiliated with, the people above you, the people in the hierarchy, whatever you want to call it, leadership tree, whatever that company's labeled, they always only want you focusing on one thing. And I've said it for years, yet if you peel the onion back, the curtain back on their businesses, they have multiple income streams. At least I hope so. All my mentors do, yeah. but yet they don't talk about it. They, they exactly. want their team just focusing on one. And what I love about you guys is I see a lot of your team. I'm friends with them. They're talking about the multiple businesses they own and it's encouraged. And I think that's freaking refreshing, guys. God forbid something happened with what we're currently doing. We don't know. We, there's so many things out of our control. To be able to have another leg of your business with money flowing in is game changing. So I applaud the two of you for being open-minded about that because I don't think it's talked about enough in our community. Honestly, on that? we weren't open-minded about it. We wouldn't be where we're at right now. So yep. think about it. We that we were hanging on to our company as long as possible. Loyalty, everything was there. But at a certain point in time, our hand is forced. We had to go a certain route. 
And thank God we were open minded to say, guess what? There is another. There are other platforms out there that you can earn a twenty, thirty thousand dollar a month income still from home. We were able to transition and still live our lifestyle. It took a work. Those ninety days, there wasn't really money coming in because we were building that pipeline. But within our first, I think our first month in the business, we didn't make anything. Our second month, we probably made like two, three thousand. Third month, it jumped up to fifteen, and then for Christmas, we were ending at thirty thousand dollars a month again within six months. So being able to leverage a second platform like that, it just keeps us open minded. And of course, we encourage multiple streams, but people take that wrong too. Don't be a jack of all trades. You have to master that craft. Like we were in the business for five years and mastered it before we stepped into the real estate space, before we stepped into the solar space. And now our goal and our focus is to master solar, master the industry and roofing and everything else that comes a part of it. And to be able to now continue to build on and and make additional streams, God forbid. We're going to do so much damage in the solar industry. Everybody going to have solar at one point. So what can we do? What's And some of our leaders tell us that one of the biggest things that we're going to make the most money on, we haven't even invented yet. I know. So crazy. So, so great. Not even on the platform yet, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so, so, something else you said, I want, I want to echo because I want to make sure it wasn't lost. And I appreciate you cleaning up, cleaning up what I was trying to say. It, it's what I call business synergy. If you're going to add additional income streams, and I actually encourage it, I really do, and I know you guys do as well, to have it, to have some sort of business synergy to where it feeds off what your main nut's going to be, your main business, your main flow. So in real estate, many know my background. Yeah, we became partners in a roofing company, partners in HVAC. It was normal, partner, partners in a staging company because we were feeding them business. So it wasn't a distraction. The other piece with that, I'm very careful when I go to mentors and I get advice. If their decision, if, if your decision affects their bottom line, I want to believe the best in everybody, but sometimes yeah. that judgment could be skewed a little bit. And that happened to me. It really yeah. did. Something else you said, I think it was Raysa in the beginning. You were a part of solar for a little bit longer than a year. You didn't have done anything with it until the last year. And that's part of what we said. We're being transparent right. with that. But right. you mentioned that a neighbor going solar. You said it quickly. Yeah. I, Cause a lot of us are motivated by that. pain you versus pleasure. That. I did catch that. I want to make sure the audience catches that. What does that mean? They went solar with you guys. I'm sure they went solar with Rob, no. right? No. Oh, what happened? No. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. So we had we our neighbor bought our house, their house at the same time we bought our house, and both of them were projects. Like these houses were built in the 1970s, never have not had anything changed since then. Cool. We're talking about rooster tiles and stuff. So like they were <laughs> rebuilding their house at the same. Like, we literally bought at the same time rebuilding. So we built a relationship with them. Two three months of in and out sweat. And we wake up one morning after everything obviously is done and we're having coffee and we see a different truck in their driveway adding solar and it wasn't with us. And it was then that Rob was like, aren't you in that solar thing? Like, how much did you say that was? <laughs> and yeah, that, that really woke us up for sure. Let's, this is uncensored. How much commission did you lose on that deal? Ballpark. Seven, eight grand. Yeah. Seven yeah. to eight thousand dollars. Yep. It still hurts. And, and mind you, that's in that moment where we were tight, you know? That's, oh, that's true. That, that, so that was, yes. that became the pivot. That was That's the, true. Like, that's seven or eight is more like a 20, 25 in that time. <laughs> and correction, because that now that we helped that client and made seven, 8,000, how many referrals would have come from that? So how much really did we lose? You're you true. Really yeah. at the numbers, but it was a hard time in our career. It was more of a test to the testimony and that time frame, and we didn't take it as a loss. We took it as a lesson. We're like, look, yeah. we're gonna get a lesson from the seven thousand, but we learned, so we're not gonna let it happen again. <laughs> a- a- audience, I hope you're picking up the clues that they're leaving. Right, they had another chance to be a victim. This solar thing, it wasn't for us. The neighbor went with someone else. I mean, it's God telling me whatever the story is, right? But no, they said that was on me. That was on me. I didn't have the conversation. Like, oh my gosh, my neighbor. Now I got to look at it every day. Sorry, guys. Now I got to look at it every day and know I lost yep. it. The other thing Rob just said, this is how leaders talk, my friends. This is important. It wasn't just the seven or 8,000. He future casted it because that's something we'll talk about later in this episode about how they're getting referrals from clients, right? That's you. It's a lot of lost money. A lot of lost money, man. And I don't mean to put salt on that, but it's important. We say in real estate too, you got to lose a deal or two. Some people are a little dense. Maybe it's a dozen before you really start to have those uncomfortable conversations. Let people know what you're doing. It takes a hard kick in the ass to wake up sometimes. Most of the time it's financially. When you take the the financial boo is one of the steel toes. And once it kicks you, you don't want to be in that situation again. Me and my wife looked at each other. We're like, we came from the bottom and we worked our way up here and we got a steel toe in the knee. 
but it's okay. We understand what this is about. We've done this before. Let's get into it. And God is good, man. We've been able to do some great things over the year with that. That's awesome, guys. Really cool. Let's take a deep dive on recruiting for a little bit. Obviously, that's part of how we got got started. That's, I, I tell people all the time, it's my love language. I love team building. I love leverage. It is my passion. I know it is for you guys. Talk to me about like when you saw this model with our company, you guys had a choice to make. You can go all in on sales. And by the way, if you did that, you're not having a zero that first month if we're keeping it real. Or sure. you can do what I call the hybrid model where you know the future and you're also building yeah. an organization but also got to sell. Talk about your mindset on that. I'll let oh, Rob answer this more. because it, yeah. I'll let you no. answer it only because you are the one that really started building the team by just by default. <laughs> Love it. Got you. Again, I'm my wife's first recruit. I say I, re <laughs> I, recruit, I recruited her, right? I'm the master recruiter. Shout out to the wife. <laughs> But I'm her first agent. And, and then, you know, what we learned in our prior company is you could do 100% of your effort. So when we first came into this, we weren't thinking about building a team. We just suffered a divorce together. That was, that was tough. And we were like, man, uh, to build another team of 5,000 people and go through everything that we've gone through in this platform, we can self-produce and we don't have to do that. We could go out there and just leverage our network and build a team and build our income personally. But we understand as leaders and as leverage and building the building opportunity in a platform that's early in its early stages. When we got into our last company, I think there was less than 16,000 people in that company. And when we left, there was over 150,000 and we had five to 6,000 of those people. So wow. understanding this platform and, and it's, it's in the beginning stages we're going to have a huge real estate portion of the business, even if we don't want to do it. Like right now, I'm looking at it like, man, even if I don't want to do it, it's going to build massive wealth going this route. It's an additional stream of income. That's where the real freedom lies is by going out there and duplicating what you can do throughout other people and, and duplicating, or I've heard this used by another mentor, residual impact instead of income. Now it's, we're blessing that family. We got single moms that made three, $4,000 during hardship. I don't want to keep that from them as a leader. We always recruiting. And I don't look at it as recruiting. I'm blessing people. Right now, people totally. are looking for opportunity. Gallons of milk are $6 right now. A carton of eggs is eight bucks. People, water, yeah. all of these things, just the, what we need to live on. People need help. Me and my wife look at each other all the time, like how are they surviving right now? So this, these platforms and this opportunity, I talk with everybody, and but strategically as well. I want to talk with the people who have big teams and have influence and know how to play the game, the end palm, right? That newest possibility of momentum and bring them into this platform. And they got, let's talk about the Aaron Brownings, that they got a network of people yeah, yeah. who bring in 50 to 100 agents into an organization in a short period of time. Those are the people that you're looking for, but you got to filter through those apples, right? You're going to, you, you got to filter through to, to sort for those leaders. You're going to run through a lot of people who are technically not going to do with the platform. They're going to yeah. sign up and be a gym member and never go work out. But you find that leader and you tap into that network, show them the value. And it's, that's how you start building. I'm getting myself in front of everybody. I'm exposing online, offline. Either way, if I'm bringing... Yeah, you... Uh, Go ahead. You keep flowing, man. I mean, you dropped a lot of bombs right there, so I want to dissect some of this, man. Yeah. The, uh, and by the way, for those watching on the YouTube, the video portion of this, I was cheesing. I couldn't help it. I knew I was. People got to Joan. It's all good. <laughs> the minute he starts talking like that, I just love it. It gets me jacked. There is something <laughs> magical about getting a check, uh, whatever your company, how they pay it. Ours is on Fridays. And you look to your wife, your spouse, and you're like... Where'd that deposit come from? Because you don't know. I don't care how small it is. Magical. And I, like I said, I'm cheesing like a little kid. It's amazing. I remember my first time at EXP. Very similar model. We yeah. were actually in Iceland for the summer. My wife's Icelandic. We were there. All of a sudden, we're waking up to, to daily deposit. I said, what in God's name is this? I didn't even know what it was because we were so new. It changed my whole life. It changed, it changed my whole life. And honestly, there was two wake-up periods in our career in solar so far. One was the neighbor going solar. That was like, Rob, let's go. That was a yep. kick. The next one, my wife's birthday, I'd love to take her to the Dominican Republic, is one of our favorite places. And again, this is the difference between building and not building, because we could have just self-produced and closed on some deals coming in. But we got some override checks during her birthday that added up to almost eight grand, nine grand on the way 
to Dominican Republic for her birthday. And we chose to take a week off. Hey, team, look, right now this is the week. We're offline. We still had that money come in. And we're looking at each other on the plane like we just made eight, nine grand on override money. No self-production. Yep. This wasn't any self-production money. It was an override check. We got to keep building this thing out because it's going to get, we're going to, we got to add more zeros to this. It's going to keep growing. Yeah, facts. And for once again, those listening who who think recruiting is a bad word, I get it. I was there. I was there. Totally there. <laughs> it is freedom. It is freedom. I hope all the solar pros listen to this that you guys want to sell guys and gals, excuse me, want to sell solar for the rest of your lives. Like, that'd be cool. My job as a leader, their job as a leader, is to give you options. So that if you yeah. want to retire in five years, ten years, twenty, you decide that. I'm not here to put pressure on you. Your income, your passive income has surpassed what you were actually producing yourself. It gives you choices. We joke in real estate. I've never been invited to a realtor's retirement party. Ever. <laughs> they don't retire. They don't retire. They're slinging homes until they're 80. That's Solar so pros. It's the same thing. This is real estate 25 years ago. I've already been there. I know how the movie ends. Yeah. If and you're not, not doing recruiting? something, who's not again? recruiting? Every company recruits. Everybody Correct. recruits. Even in relationship is a recruit. You got to completely shift your mindset on that word or that vocabulary. Like I look at it as in a relationship, you're looking for a wife or you're looking for a husband. Yep. The military, McDonald's, all, every business is hiring. They're recruiting somebody. And with the help of good recruits, the business grows. And the more good recruits that you bring on and the core values add up and everybody's doing their thing, that business continues to flourish. So why try to do all the work by yourself when you can have a per- 1% of 100 people's effort and it just starts to build out that way. The other thing you're recruiting, let's change the mindset. And you bring up a great point, Rob. One of my favorite books, it's somewhere behind me, Seller Be Sold. It changed my life. Changed my life. I never viewed it like that. Grant Cardone, for those of you that don't know, but he talks about we're selling or buying every single thing we do with your kids. Hey, hey son, do you want broccoli or you want carrots? No, I want french fries. If I gave him french fries, I bought what he sold me. Or if he right. chose broccoli or carrots, he bought what I sold him. It happens all day long. We do it with our spouses. We do it at school. We do it at work. We're constantly doing it. The other thing Rob said, and, and this is something I teach all the time. I'm not as strong as Rob. I'm not as strong as Ray. So they got this mindset. They're on a different level, guys. They really are. I have to, I got to get uncomfortable every day when I recruit. It's not my natural thing. I get uncomfortable. I got big freaking goals. I got a family counting on me. I got dreams, right? And so I use that. But the thing I tell myself every single day before I pick up that 10 pound weight known as a phone, hopefully somebody can relate, right? It's who do I know right now that is either overworked or underpaid? Guys, I'll be I know one person that doesn't meet that th- those two questions. Every person I know is either overworked or they're underpaid. I know people in, in solar right now making 200 grand a month, but they haven't had a day off in 18 months. Correct. Think about it. And so that's the story I'm constantly telling myself. Who can I bless to steal Rob and Race's vocab? I love that. And so once again, if you change the meaning around the word recruitment, recruiting, I think it changes everything. Let's talk about some of the struggles having a massive organization of over 400 sellers, agents, sales force, whatever you want to label it, depending on the company you're at. Is, do you guys wake up every single day and it's freaking amazing? No. I, I don't. I go like, yeah, this is rainbows and butterflies, I, but I will, I'll let my wife touch yeah, on I this one. Up, yeah, I woke up to a four minute voice note from someone on the team today. And it, yeah, it wasn't pleasant. <laughs> so no, not every day is great, but I had to learn how to shift my mindset into every problem is more of an opportunity or how can I solve this and teach people how to solve as well. So I've had to shift my mindset because sometimes I really want to be like, turn off my phone, <laughs> be like figure it out like I had to in my career. Because when we were starting to, we had those struggles of not knowing what to do. It's just a reality of building something from scratch. And I I do realize that a lot of people do run into that, but it's definitely not all peaches and unicorns building a team. It is very, very challenging. And we see a lot of things <laughs> when it comes yeah, to Yeah, I think, and I appreciate you guys being honest on that. I know it's somewhat a rhetorical question, but as leaders, we don't talk enough about that. And honestly, I think a lot of times our subconscious is so strong that sometimes we don't do something because of the what ifs. And and so my fear, and the reason I bring that up is some people are thinking, gosh, I I get that they're doing that, they're great personalities, but my phone would blow up if I had 400 people calling me every day. Yeah, it does, it absolutely does. One of my mentors years ago taught me, and something that changed my life again, the size of the problems that we're solving is direct proportion to the amount of income we're bringing in from it. 
And so I love what Racer just said. I look at problems as opportunity. Same thing. I'm like, oh, that's a small problem. That's going to be a small paycheck. I need bigger ones, bigger problems. <laughs> and when I do that, once again, I don't always mean it, right? But it's, it's changing my mindset about it. So now I'm training myself to welcome it. I'm a problem solver. The other thing that Rob said, go ahead, Rob, sorry. Yeah, I was going to mention something too. And again, another mentor had taught me, he said this recently. And he was like, look, when you want more strength, they'll add more weight to you. And when you, and you want to become more knowledgeable, they're going to have more problems. And so you can become a problem solver. So you have to go through those stages. We, you, we had to learn how to have a team of 20 to build into a team of 50, to build into a team of 100, to 1,000, to 5,000. There was certain milestones and transitions. Every level, new level, new devil. <laughs> so true. Being, yeah, being able to continue. Uh, again, the top is sweet. It's beautiful, but you going up there with scratches and bruises is not meant for everybody. A lot of people turn back halfway up the hill or they don't even start at all. They quit before they get started. So seeing, being able to grow into that, growing into a leader and helping people become leader. You know, that's one of the hardest parts about what we do. Not only are we therapists, not are we counselors and we do all of the above, but it's really helping that next person break through life, whatever that may be. And it's not meant for everybody. Not everybody is built to be a mentor and a coach. Some people are built to be very good students. And But it, it is a beautiful feeling when you do find that student that becomes a teacher. And now, how fulfilling is that? It might have been a thousand people that calling you every day and you want to throw the phone against the wall. But that one success story when, you know, that mom has made 10 grand this month or that agent walked away from corporate America because of something that we showed him. That's, that makes it all worth it. Yeah, I get goosebumps. It's powerful. That, that's, that's really the mission and the vision behind what we do. Something else Rob said earlier, and this is going to stink some people, but it's all good. It's uncensored. He talks about filtering and having to go through some numbers. You, we don't know who's going to show up. I tell people all the time, that's God's, that's God's choice. That's God's decision. My mm -hmm. job is to point them in the right direction of what I believe is the promised land. Whether or not they show up is up to them. But something I say all the time, and I get pushback for it, I am a business coach, not a life coach. Like, facts. Not saying we're not friends with everybody, but I, I, especially during my hours of nine to five, when I bleed, sweat, and chase my dreams and chase those on the team, I'm here to talk about business. And so I, I share that because when you're recruiting at the level that the three of us are recruiting, we can be selective. I let someone go this week. True story. It's only Tuesday. Yeah. I let someone go. Every time we got on the phone, I think I met him on YouTube. Sharp guy. would have loved him. But every time, it was a two-hour conversation. I don't have the bandwidth to do it. So God bless him. I hope he joins our company. He's going to go under another leader that has more bandwidth. That's just not, that's not my audience. That's not my niche. I want business people. I want people who are driven, right? I want conversations like this. And so I'd love to get, do you guys have an audience? Do you have your ideal prospect of who you're looking for, who you speak well, who you vibe with, who you want in your tribe, if you will? Yeah. So I feel like you attract your tribe. So for yeah. me, I, before becoming an entrepreneur and the racer that everyone knows now, I was bankrupt, broke, broken, went through a divorce, just struggling, slept, slept on an air mattress with my son in an empty house because we had to sell everything in it. So I feel like that's my audience. My audience is there's women out there that have children that have that extra strength, right? No offense to all the guys, but there's just something about a mom that wants to provide yeah. that I think is it's literally a, a battery. It's literally a battery that you cannot turn off. And that's who I speak to when I'm looking at my audience, who is a mom out there that's struggling, single mom, divorce, or maybe looking at their last dollar in their bank account because there's just something about that strength that I can relate to. And when they turn that around and they use that strength and they use that why, it's so powerful. And so I like to attract that type of tribe. And I truly believe that with that strength, just that battery, you can do anything. You could do solar, you could do, obviously I would want you to do solar with me, but it's really just about making a decision to not stay where you are. And I think that's the audience that I like to attract the most or that I attract the most through what I've been through. I want to give one caveat and then Rob, I want to hear yours. Cause it's probably a different audience. I would imagine the, by the way, audience, people listening, you could tell like she leaned in for those watching on camera. Like she, she yeah. knows her audience, her tribe. The only caveat, I don't want to say I disagree with her. Cause I agree with everything she said, how you attract your tribe. You attract your tribe when you know who your tribe is. 
when you're authentic. And she's authentic with that. She shared some accountability, some vulnerability, living in a car. Like that's real life, selling everything, right? So when she, because she's willing to do that, and we're going to talk about she's willing to do that on social, by the way, which is so badass, so badass, she <laughs> is attracting that. So I think so often, though, we had tried as, as aspiring leaders, we try to talk to everybody, and therefore you talk to nobody. Correct. Like, I, I'm ultra in your face. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a life coach. Shh, people leave because of that. Oh, I can't call Aaron for per- – no, that's not my job. That's not what I'm here. And so I attract that audience. What about you, Rob? Who's your ideal? Man, and I look for people like myself. Uh, I'm looking for another Rob, man, a young, hungry – me you too. Know, humble. <laughs> Me too. Looking for people that are just willing to play the game, coachable. Like those are the things that we look for. People that are hungry, coachable, willing to take the bat in their hands and swing it and not fearless. Like I, I could go down the list of people that I look for, but I'm looking for that person that, that really wants it. And there could be so many different categories because I'm an only child of a single mom. And I grew up, I was raised by all women. So some of the audience that I saw talk about, I also tap into just on a male perspective. I, there are women raising kings out there. My mom is the only child. I'm the only child from my mom. She's a cancer survivor. So that was big. I, obviously, when it comes to that, it's touching. Our son has autism. So that's another group of families that we've noticed so much currently right now that is really impacting families. We've met people and bartenders. We've met two bartenders recently on the same shift and both of their daughters and their daughters were autistic. So the, that's another audience of family and fathers teaching guys how to be kings. We've lost that. Right now, husbands, like I, the way I treat my wife, the way I treat people. I'm looking at that. That's something that I really look at is how you treat people because of how you treat people and you show me how you treat people. I know we can do business together. So those are some of the things that I look for sure with in the leadership when we're looking, when we're sorting through it. those people. Love it. Once again, audience, do you think he just made that up? Was that fluff? No, like goosebumps. Like once again, he knows who his ideal candidate, ideal prospect is. Let's pivot a little bit. I know we're up against it. You guys are both so busy. But one topic I do want to spend a little bit of time on is social media. You guys kill it. You're famous inside of our company on the social media game that you guys do. Let's talk about specifically to kick it off. How do you, the two of you, and I'd like to hear both of your answers if you don't mind, because I think they're different again. But how do the two of you leverage social media to recruit, to attract top talent? So not sales yet, but like recruiting people. How are you using social media to do that? I think primarily, if I was to boil it down into one word, it's consistency. It's just the consistency of showing up every day for your business. And of course, we can talk about branding and we could talk about this. But more importantly, I feel that my audience knows who I am. They know exactly what type of person I am, that I love to give back, that I love to help people, that I like to empower. And that is something that you can show on social media very easily, right? And people actually feel that genuineness from you. But more importantly, is just constantly showing up and actually meeting some of the people. I've met people online and then I'm like, hey, are you local? Let's have a coffee or are you networking here? And there's nothing like that in-person vibe. So you always want to try to take it off, even if it's through a Zoom, if they're not local. And I think that's what's really helped us build an audience to where they are comfortable even referring us to anyone in their network. And then we take those people and take them from online to offline. So I think it's just been the consistency of just showing up and really being genuine and building these relationships that has helped us. And social media is an avenue that you could do that easily. Like you could use it in a wrong way or you could use it the right way. Mm. Love that. By the way, real quick, Rob, I'll come to you in a second. How many friends do you have on Facebook? Five, I'm at the limit, 5,000. Okay. So I didn't, I knew, but I didn't know because like, we never talked about it. I, I, I yeah. want to give a life hack, right? Uncensored. I teach this all the time. The three of us do on our trainings. If you are on Facebook, you are in sales, recruiting, whatever you're doing, you own a business. And that's probably why you're listening to us today. And you're not maxed out at 5,000 friends. You failed. Mm-hmm. I'm being honest. I'm being transparent. You failed. They yeah. put a cap on it. I wish to God they didn't. Like, let's figure that part out. Mark, if you listen, right. let's raise that. But wow. think about it. Go join groups. Go get purposeful. It is free marketing. Right. They go on Facebook and they're making these posts. They're making stories, reels, whatever. And, and, and they're sharing wisdom and nuggets and inspiring people. If you are only inspiring 100 because that's where you capture yourself at, you're missing it. It's free. Like, yeah. free. 100%. People 20 yeah. years ago would have killed for that thing. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, it's huge. Anyway, sorry. Like I said, I yeah, want to make sure people I aren't sleeping it. on that. <laughs> Rob, Rob, what about you? 
social true, media man. recruiting and attraction. We built, I would say, and my wife could correct me, probably 85% of our business through social media. A certain we, platform where you would say most of that comes from? I use multiple now, but like in the beginning stages, Facebook was always a great platform for me a majority of the time. Instagram, we've built over time. I think we've had more success on the Facebook platform than the Instagram. I've used the Snapchat. I've done the Clubhouse calls. I've done WhatsApp. Some people are international. We got, there's so many. The TikTok blew up. They're like, you never know. And one thing about social media is just being relatable. Like yeah. you, you have to, people are going to do business with people who they like, they trust, and they're like them. I want people to know that. I wasn't a straight A student. I struggled growing up. I did. I didn't do the best things. Again, being an only child, going through the cancer process with my mom, seeing my wife struggle with depression and anxiety, but still build a six-figure business, and being an autistic mother, and like all of that, we share that. A lot of people are like, oh, that's my personal life, but it's our testimony. Someone is looking forward to seeing that. It's putting hope into them, and that turns into to action. I've, we, me and my wife get people all the time that are like, if it wasn't for your posting and you give it showing me that there's a way out, like there's people on the verge of committing suicide right now. There's people like it's, it's deeper than just business. And then after a while, when people see you show up consistently, you're reliable. You're someone that they can trust. They know that Razor's gonna motivate them somehow. They know that not every day is gonna be a bright and shiny day. One of the days we're gonna post about our struggles. One of the days we're gonna post about our successes. And it's not to brag, it's to just show y'all four or five years ago we was dead broke. And now because we put our foot on the gas onto some of these platforms that we still consistent, people seen us transition to dead broke. From dead broke to where yeah. we're out. And now I get customers all this. I, I was talking to her about this yesterday. I had a, a referral come in yesterday from someone who I worked with at Amscot when I was 18, 19 years old. And have I been using social media? And they seen the difference. They seen the growth in me. And that's what they yeah. said. Rob, I've seen you grow so much. You've been so consistent. I remember you F-bombing, F this. And now I'm professional. Now I know how to speak in front of a camera. Now I can speak in front of thousands of people and I document it. I show people that I was in the Bank of America cubicle at one time that wasn't even bigger than this office here to being able to travel and do something that 95% of people are scared to do. They're scared to talk. They're scared to be vulnerable and share their life experiences with people because they fear judgment. I'm not worried about what nobody else is feeling about me. I'm looking at this like right now, I know because of what we're doing, we're making an impact. Somebody is more active today in their physical and their mental and their spiritual, all of that because of what we're putting out on a daily and it becomes a resume. There's people above your pay grade that are looking at you coming up. I want to mentor that person and there's people that are not at your level yet that look up to you and they're like, I want to be just like them because I'm watching their journey and I know it's possible. So I feel like social media gives you a free platform where everybody in the world is on, not just in the United States, everybody is on social media and all you are is one life change away from someone's life that you change that will completely change yours. My yeah, mental you, you, change our lives. Really well said. And and this is, we don't have time to go that deep on it, unfortunately, but this yeah, is your gift. It really is both of you. Um, you're so good at sharing your journey. I don't even want to call it struggle, but your journey, but yeah. yet your page is full of positivity. And so I see a lot of people where they'll be transparent and I applaud that, but they're not out of that darkness yet. And people want to see that you found a solution to it, right? So I always teach people, don't talk about the darkness yet, like outward facing until you have a solution, until you're on the other side of it. Now you have a story. Guys, I was here. I did this. Oh, by the way, look where I'm at now because of X, Y, Z. So often I see people like, oh, today's the worst day ever. Man, I don't want to see that. Because I can go to the news and watch that. I want positivity. I want to know you might have had a bad day, but here's what I did today to fix that bad day. Give me a solution. Yeah. And so I love that. You guys nailed that. Like I said, I can't think of anybody else, even outside of our company, that does that at a higher level. In closing, if you guys, once again, both of you could take it, I think it'd be a little bit stronger. 
What advice would you give someone brand new thinking about starting in solar, just like you guys did a year ago? What advice would you give someone brand new? Zero solar experience. Maybe they have a sales experience, but they're thinking about doing it, thinking about jumping in. What does that look like? I would say the first thing is obviously find the right platform, find the right mentor, someone that can that, that you can actually lock arms with and be a student. We look for three things. If you're willing, coachable, and hungry, I could work with that. But if you're one of the three or two of the three, like I cannot work with that because you could be willing, hungry, but not coachable. Yep. And so if I'm teaching you something, you're not taking it in and you have all the will and the hunger, you really have to be all three. So you really have to become a student of the game and really just learn. It's funny, but a lot of the things I learn is on YouTube. Like I literally love YouTube. Like I have learned so much about the solar industry just on YouTube. Our company does great with training, but I just love to dive deep. I bought books on solar. I literally, with that 90 day run, what that consisted of wasn't just work. It was a lot of education and going into this space with I need to learn as much as I can so that I can be provide to people what they are looking for within this space. And if you come with that attitude, there's no way that you could fail. There's absolutely no way. I think that sometimes people just come in, oh, let me try it for a month and see if it works. If you come in with that attitude, I don't even want you on my team because it just doesn't work like that. It takes time. It takes time to build credibility in 30 days not your whole network is gonna be like, let's go with her instead of this person. It doesn't work like that. It takes time to build credibility, takes time to build that consistency, takes time to build a brand. But on the other side of that is everything that you ever wanted. And it's just gonna, it's just gonna take someone that's willing, coachable and hungry. Love it. The key thing you said, Rob, I'll come to you in one second, is the key thing to me, I should say. Everyone's gonna have their own takeaway from that because it was powerful, the mentor. I've had some amazing mentors in my life. My uh, last one, he still changed a lot in me and I'm, I'm grateful for it, but he was not actively in the business anymore. It was more coaching. What I love about you two and what I do, what all three of us are doing is we're in the trenches with our team. Like we're doing it, bleeding, like running with them. So it's not only are we giving you the knowledge and the experience, but it's real life. It wasn't something we did a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. And so I would tell people to echo what you said, go find a mentor like Reza. Go find someone that's in the trench is going to lock arms with you who has what you want and has been where you want to go. So powerful. Rob? I would say fail faster, fail forward. A lot of people are scared to fail. I'm not. The failure will lead to the success. I want you guys to go figure out that you made that mistake. I, we didn't add the attic run. and Oh, man, I learned from it. And I didn't add this. And I messed up on some margins. That's how you learn the fastest is by making the mistakes in the business and be okay with that. Set the right expectation. Give yourself a real time to succeed. Not two weeks, three weeks. Give yourself, invest a full year into the business, but fail fast in the beginning. Because now, in a year from now, you can tell stories to your team on how you continuously failed your way up. And I feel like that's where my, me and my wife are right now. We didn't know anything about the industry. We could have made up so many different excuses of why we can't do this. We're not door knock. I ain't never door. I think I door knocked for the first time the other day. We don't know any. We don't know anything about solar. Or are we meant for this business? Are we professional enough? For all these thoughts subconsciously come into your mind, yep. and I'm like, let's jump in. Let's fail. We the first failure cost us seven grand. We failed to get on board faster and go, that was it. Now, how can we fail our way up? Mess up on the presentation. I'm gonna mess up on the phone call and have that mentor there to correct us and learn from those mistakes and apply the corrections and just keep moving forward and encouraging people to fail. I really trust that. The faster you fail, the faster you become successful. Yep, I tell people all the time too, growth is chaotic. If your life's not chaotic right now, you're not growing. Like, it's a mess. Like, you come look behind the curtains of our businesses. Oh, my gosh. Our phones, oh by gosh. the way, they're all, all three of us are in airplane mode. We have no idea what we're about to open back up. That's just real talk. Exactly. Yeah, and we're all, oh, gosh. Real, real quick, how do people find you? How, how do they get connected with Robin Reza? So, our, we have our website, our solar consulting.com we have our instagram rnr solar consulting.com and then we have our personal handles so race santiago if you type that you'll find me everywhere rob santiago you'll find us on facebook instagram through our first names but we do have our handle rnr solar consulting.com websites and we also have facebook 
business page and also Instagram. Love it. Love it. So guys, make sure if you got value and I know you did, go say thank you, go add, follow, whatever platform you find them on. They're here to help. They're here to support. You'll be motivated at the very least, even if you don't reach out and just follow them. Rob Race, I can't thank you guys enough. For those in the audience, if there was some nugget that you're going to directly grab a hold of and go run an impact in your business, please share, review this podcast. We do this for free. We do it to pour, to bless, to help people fail forward quicker, to help people get into action. Rob Race, again, thank you so much. I know this has been in the works for several weeks. I appreciate you both. You guys are amazing friends, amazing leaders. Thank you for being so transparent thank with all you. of us. No thank doubt. you. Thank you for having us, Aaron. Thank you so much. Congratulations Absolutely. to you as well. Ha, <laughs> ha,